Hey guys, I hope you're doing okay. Today we're going to be talking about talking donkeys, the Bible, TV, adverts and Jesus. It's going to be good. So anyone who's in England will know that recently, I think it's still going, there's this advert about a donkey being treated badly in like this desert because it's, it's having to carry bricks and it's really painful and basically the donkey saying, please, please help get rid of this cruel treatment to donkeys. And what tickles me about this advert is not that the donkey can talk, but the fact that they make the donkey talk in a voiceover. It's kind of like the donkey didn't have the confidence to talk in front of the camera, which is really weird, because if you were the only donkey in the world, which you'd have to assume that he is the only, or she is the only donkey in the world that can talk, he would be confident. He'd be running up to all his donkey friends and just be like, hey guys, how you doing? Oh yeah, you can't talk. <laughs> Yeah. Say nothing if you're gay. Ah, you're gay. Not the only talking donkey in the world. They went out and they said, oh, can you make an advert with us about cruel treatment towards donkeys? And he was like, yeah, I'd love to. I'm a donkey. I don't like being treated cool. Let's make this advert. And when they got the donkey and they put him in front of the camera, he was just really shy. I'm camera shy. Can we, I can't, I thought I could, I, I can't do it. I'm sorry, can I just do a voiceover? Yeah, voiceover, yeah. So he does the voiceover and he's like, oh, donkeys have to carry bricks and it's really difficult. And I'm kind of thinking, well, you are a donkey. It's kind of what you were made for. You're not big, you're short, you're sturdy, you're a donkey. You're kind of nature's answer to the van or the U-Haul truck. You're... It even says so in the Bible, which by the way, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know what it is, the Bible is this book that was written a really long time ago, and it centers around this main character called Jesus, and it's got like a surprise ending, because he dies, and you think he's dead, and then bang, he comes back from the dead. It's fucking mind-blowing. It's... it's definitely one of my favorite fictional novels. <sighs> People aren't gonna like that. So anyway, in this book, the Bible, like, there's this woman called the Virgin Mary who apparently didn't have sex but got pregnant and then told her gullible husband, I'm pregnant, but I didn't sleep with anyone, I promise. And then Joseph, the husband, was like, okay, we're going to travel from Nazareth to Jerusalem, which is like, I looked in the globe, it's really big, it's really big. And they were like, right, we'll get a donkey to carry you from Nazareth to Jerusalem, which is huge, it means massive, it's massive. And, like, even in the Bible, donkeys were being treated unfairly. Except this donkey in the Bible has it way worse than this new donkey who has to carry bricks. Because if this donkey drops bricks, nobody gives a fuck. Because drips are meant... Drips? Bricks are meant to be dropped. It's kind of what they're made for. That's the least that they're meant to be able to do. Take a little drop. This donkey, back way when, when it was written, when Jesus was still in the womb, had to carry the Virgin Mary, who was this big figure, and also the unborn baby fetus of Jesus Christ. Now that is responsibility. If this donkey on the TV drops his bricks, nobody cares, but if this donkey, back way when carrying Jesus, drops Mary, that would be massive, because if anything happened to Jesus, then Christianity would just be stopped. Right, it, it wouldn't have even happened. It would have been stopped before it even started. No Christmas, no Easter. The whole of Christianity and everything was riding on the back of this donkey and it didn't complain. If this donkey had tripped and something had happened to Jesus, then there wouldn't have been Christmas because Christmas celebrates his birthday and there would have been no birthday. And then all those children who get all that joy from Christmas wouldn't have that joy. So they had like millions of children's joy riding on this donkey's back. And Easter. Easter is because of Jesus when he came back from the dead. And, like Easter's really important because Easter's like that one time of year where fat girls can justify eating large amounts of chocolate to themselves without feeling bad. So this donkey has traveled from Nazareth to Jerusalem with Jesus on his back and Mary for miles and miles without stopping and then it finally gets to where it needs to go. And at the end of the journey, you'd kind of think that they'd be grateful for this donkey for not like killing Jesus. But Nope, I'll read you, I'll read you from my Bible stories book. Um, so Joseph loaded his donkey with a few possessions and took Mary on the long journey south from Nazareth to Bethlehem, Bethlehem, not Jerusalem, which was the town of his ancestor, David. When they arrived, Mary and Joseph were exhausted. Hang on, why is Mary and Joseph exhausted? Surely the donkey's exhausted. The donkey's the one that's been doing all the work. They've done fuck all. They've just been sitting around. And yet, even though this donkey did all of this hard work back 
then, this new donkey has the cheek to go on TV and complain over a few bricks. Sorry if I offended any Christians. This video doesn't really lend itself to a question, so I'm going to ask if you could give Jesus any superpower, what would it be?